My friends in Christ, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I went to high school in Bellevue at Bellevue West. Go Thunderbirds. While I was there, all of the lockers were uh, on one level in the same commons area. And then most of the classrooms were on the level directly above that, uh, that commons area. There were two huge, wide staircases that, that connected the two levels to each other. Now, students would hang out in the commons area until it was about time for class. Then, then they would head up the staircases for class to start. And when the bell rang as each class period ended, and especially at the end of the day, as this giant mass of humanity would descend the stairs all at once. We were packed together going down those stairs. And my, my sister on Facebook last night said it was like a, a huge herd of cattle. It was a sight to behold, seriously. Someone could have jumped on top and body surfed all the way down if they wanted to without their feet ever having to touch the floor. Now, if for some reason you were at the bottom of the stairs and were trying to go up at the same time that class was getting out and 1,200 or so of your closest friends were heading down, well, it just couldn't be done. It was not possible to go up the down staircase. Now today, in our sermon series on faith questions that you were afraid to ask but that your kids weren't, we come to the question of salvation. What is salvation? What does it mean? What is it that we're saved from? What do you have to do to go to heaven? Just like it was at my high school. With God, it's not possible to go up the down staircase. Now we have this tendency to think of salvation as a staircase that we need to climb with the top of the staircase eventually bringing us to God, to heaven. Now maybe we think of baptism as the first step. Or for some folks, maybe it's when they realize that they trusted God, that, that faith meant something to them. A lot of times we look at how we live our lives. We, we look at the good that we do, or the prayers that we say, or the activities that we're involved with at church, or the lives that we touch in a positive way as steps up the staircase. And then we consider our individual sins. Now the things that we have done and that we have left undone, not loving God with our whole hearts, not loving our neighbors as ourselves, and we see them as steps back down the staircase. And so we live our lives taking a few steps forward, a few steps back, working hard and, and hopefully progressing so that one day we may at last reach where God wants us to be. In this model, however, scripture becomes a rule book. It becomes a guide to climbing the stairs in our lives, at least if we're really serious about it, if we're really serious about our faith and about God, they end up becoming consumed by this quest. But the thing is, for God, this staircase is a down staircase. We don't go up. God comes down. It's not possible to go up the down staircase. The gospel, the good news of God in Christ Jesus is not that Jesus finally gave us a way to get up the stairs. It's that God in Jesus came down. Emmanuel, God with us. And even for Christians, this can be hard to understand. We are people who claim grace through faith as our life and as our heritage. But our minds still tend to operate as though law and not grace has the final say. Now when I speak of law here, I'm, I'm talking about much more than the rules that we find in the Bible. Now those are certainly laws. But I'm speaking in broader categories. Speaking of law in the way that Martin Luther thought of it. In his eyes, the law is what kills the old Adam in us. The law is whatever works 
word convicts us of our complete inability to get it right. The law tells me, Matt, you are a sinner. You have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. The law operates on an if-then basis. If you do this, then you will get that. It's language we understand. If I'm good, then God will bless me. If I'm good, then I'm climbing the staircase. I'm getting closer to God. If I sin, I'm going down the staircase. If I'm bad, God won't bless me. But because God comes down the staircase to us, because in the cross God has met us right where we are, our relationship with God is no longer based on that if-then. It's not a matter of if I do this, then God will do that. Our relationship with God is not an if-then. Our relationship with God is a because Therefore, because God came down the staircase in Jesus, because Jesus died on the cross, because Jesus defeated the power of sin and death once and for all, therefore, you have been saved from your sin. You have been saved from needing life and, and faith and salvation to be about you. You have been freed from yourself. You no longer have to worry about the staircase, about trying to scratch and claw your way up. You no longer have to worry about whether you've done enough, about the number of good God points or bad sin points that you've accumulated. In Christ, you are a new creation. And this new creation isn't caught up in the game of point-keeping or stair-stepping. In our reading this morning, Paul describes what Luther called the happy exchange. Now, happy exchange actually is an actual technical theological term, even if it doesn't sound all that technical. It's supposed to sound more complicated, right? Now, the term makes me think of, of the painter who used to be on PBS, Bob Ross. Uh, as if he were standing in the returns line at Coles on the day after Christmas. And I'm here to make a happy little exchange. But the meaning of the term is incredibly profound. This is earth-shattering stuff. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, Paul writes, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God took all of our junk. God took all of our evil, all of our sin, and God gave it all to Jesus. And at the same time, God took all of Jesus' righteousness and gave it to us. That's the exchange. God takes on our sin. We take on God's righteousness, and so we end up seeing those things together at the same time in ourselves. We are, as Luther tells us, at the very same time, both sinner and saint. We are at the same time, the old Adam and the new creation. The law of sin and the gospel of righteousness are both at work within us at the same time. And so salvation is not a process. Salvation is not a staircase to climb. Salvation is what lets Paul write, see, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And most importantly, salvation is not up to us. Ephesians 2 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith. And it's not of our own doing, it's a gift from God. Not by our own works, so that no one may boast. If it were up to us, we would be right back to trying to climb up that staircase. We would be right back to trying to go up the down staircase. 
If it were up to us, the cross would not be something new and transformational. Instead, it would be a method of self-help for us. If it were up to us, we would be right back to living under the if and then of the law. Instead, we are assured of this because Jesus died, because Jesus now lives, because God came to us, because of the cross and the resurrection and the promises of God, therefore, we have been made right with God. We have been reconciled with God. God has done it completely on God's initiative because of God's infinite love for humankind. Our law-driven, if-then minds have such a hard time grasping this truth. Surely we think there must be something that, that we have to do to make it happen. Even something as simple as saying a prayer, or just repenting, or just, just something, right? But we cannot add anything to the grace already shown us in Christ and still call it grace. A gift with conditions is no longer a gift. And so anytime we hear someone begin a statement about salvation with the words, all you have to do is, dot, 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 no matter how simple they are trying to make it, let those hairs stand up on the back of your neck because you are about to hear an if-then law statement. And while the law is what drives us to the foot of the cross, while the law is what grabs us by the collar and confronts us with our deep sinfulness, the law is not what has the final say in our lives. We do not climb up the down staircase. Christ comes to us. All you have to do is absolutely nothing. Jesus has already done it all on the cross and in the empty tomb, and therefore you are forgiven even before you realized you needed forgiveness. You are loved through absolutely no doing of your own. You are redeemed and restored and made new through Christ who came down the staircase and met you in your sin. We are saved by grace through faith, but when we understand faith as the trust that we talked about last week, trusting God, then faith is simply our response to what God has already done. It is our trust in God's promises. It is our trust in the cross. It is our trust that it's not up to us. Faith is not simply yet another work. It's not simply some other hoop to jump through to make us acceptable to God. Faith is our response to the God who has already done it all, who has come down to us. And nowhere do we see this more clearly than in baptism. It's not baptism itself that saves us. Baptism is not fire insurance. Baptism is a means of grace. It is a drowning of the old Adam in the waters, a raising of a new creation. Later this morning, when Amelia is baptized, we will see the happy exchange right there in front of us, right there in action in her life. But although we're only baptized once, at the very same time, in a very real way, it's also something that's continuous, it's ongoing. Now, daily we sin. Daily the law convicts us of our sin. Daily we drown the old and are brought to life in the new. Daily we are simultaneously sinner and saint. Our trust in the promises that God makes to us in baptism, the promises of forgiveness and of new life, call us then into lives of reconciliation as God's ambassadors. We are bearers of God's promise. We carry in us and with us and through us the promises of new life for the world. And so together, we then can, can proclaim with the Apostle Paul, now, now is the acceptable time. 
Now is the day of salvation. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.